Okay, so here's the main board from that push TV I'm repairing. Um, these connectors are bugger to get off because the manufacturers decided to use glue on them. And look, that one there should come off the board because the glue is strong, so strong it holds the connector in place. Very difficult to get out. I wasn't even able to get this one out, so I had to unplug it the other end, which isn't glued in. Yeah, makes belief really why they do this. Um, only see it in cheap TVs really, I guess. They uh, can't figure out how to stop, how to ship the TVs properly so the cables don't fall out. Anyway, there's the dodgy regulator. I have bought some new regulators and I will replace it. And uh, you might be able to see the regulator is gone. That's uh, what, what was that difficult? The one thing you've got to be aware of is the tiny 0402 resistors buried right next to it are all too easy to accidentally take off. Luckily I didn't take them off. Although I know it's going to be outputting about 3.3 volts so I probably could have guessed what value they were. Lost it. Well, broken anyway. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the output to ground just in case there was a short circuit which for some reason was intermittent. If there was, I need to do a more detailed examination of the board. But as it worked occasionally, I don't think there's going to be a short circuit. Anyway, I'll just get the meter out. Okay. Let's find a ground point. Screws usually a good one. Okay, so we've got 395 ohms. 400 ohms to ground, which is definitely not sure. So I could regulate it's easily able to do that. In fact, almost all of that will be the resistors uh, for the adjust pin. I mean, this is uh, these TVs are supposed to draw half a watt in standby, so um, they can't use the they can't be drawing too much power from that standby regulator, or they will exceed that limit. Now it's time to replace the regulator. Now with this um, kind of component, because it's fairly big, what I recommend doing is just uh, sticking it down and just tacking the pins one by one. Now tack the tab pin first, that'll help you get the alignment right, and then you can do the other three pins. Uh, the tab pin is the same as the middle pin on these. Um, but you must connect both because the tab pin is also a heat sink for the regulator. So I don't know if you can see on the camera now, but that's now leveled out. Now nice and flat. So I will uh, just use some convenient, I'll use a pair of scissors here. Anything with a, you can grab. So I've got the, it's not difficult. I actually have some, so a tool for this lying around somewhere, but I can't find it at the moment. Just plop it on the board any angle for now, and then you uh, tweak it. Like the thing. And then just tack, as I said, tack the pins down. Uh, do the tab pin first. It's kind of difficult to do this while I'm holding the camera, so. So uh, there you go, new one, soldered in place. It's very difficult to actually do SMD badly. It's much, I mean, aside from the small components, it's much easier than through hole to solder SMD. A lot of people can't claim. So uh, give it a try if your TV is faulty. Let's go and see if it works. That's the big test after all. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, red sandbar. I've not seen that before. Uh, oh, power button. It's gone yellow, orange. Oh, what it was doing. Just, oh, there you go. Right, right up. Uh, some reason the light's red. <laughs> it was green. Maybe the connector's loose or something. Um, <laughs> I've not encountered the LED changing colour before. Oh well, it works. 
Okay, well, the main problem on the TV is fixed, but I want this thing to last me four years to university, so uh, these JH and Cat Crapzon capacitors are going to go. Oh, wait, how do you pronounce Capzon? I pronounce it Capzon as in a Z, but I've heard people pronounce it Capexon, I'm just not sure really. Uh, all I know is they make among the worst capacitors in the world because I have replaced too many of those to count. Next to Samwa, and they really only had two particular bad series of capacitors. But anyway, replacing capacitors is really easy and I recommend it if you want your device to last. <laughs> Today's devices do not come with good capacitors. The first step, uh, the first step is to uh, get some DC capacitors now. I am going to be using Rubicon and Panasonic capacitors because they are some of the best capacitors you can buy. Um, I've ordered a lot here because I'm, I'm repairing a few other TVs with them. Uh, in this TV we've got two 1010s, two 1025s and another 1025 over here. I'm replacing these all with 1025s, that's fine. If anything, it will increase the lifespan because the ESR will be lower and the ripple current rate will be higher. These things alone have a lifespan of about 5,000 hours, but if you treat them well, they'll last 50,000 to 100,000 hours. These things, on the other hand, would struggle to do 5,000 on a good day. Um, so, I bought my capacitors from Parnell. You can get them uh, from DigiKey, Mauser few other suppliers. You can even get them from eBay, but you've got to beware of fakes. Look at that. This is a Rubicon capacitor, same one as that. See how much shorter it is, because the technology is much better. More compact. Anyway, first step is to... Well, I'm going to pull these two caps and replace them. And I'll do them in groups, so don't forget where, which capacitors went where. I won't do them all at once. You have to remember not to uh, pull the capacitors you've just replaced. Replacing capacitors is really quite easy. Uh, you need a soldering iron. Um, I've set mine, because it's temperature control, I've set mine to 400 degrees. Um, and I'll try and do this with one hand. So basically, uh, you take your board and you try and fill for the capacity you're replacing. So here, and you locate it on the board, which just requires a bit. Of, well, you'll get it right eventually. You 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 get used to it. So just heat up the pin, pull it slightly to one side, it'll come loose. Heat up the other pin, pull it slightly to the other side, and it'll come loose. And then just wiggle it out. And that's one capacitor removed. And just repeat the process for the other one. There we go. And of course, you don't really care too much if you damage these capacitors because they're crap anyway and they're going to be replaced. Uh, be careful not to uh, block the hole. I mean, you will inevitably eventually block a hole. On a single layer board, it's not a big deal. See there, I think I did it. You can just use some solder wick to clear up or even. You can not particularly bother. Since it's a single layer, you can actually just borrow a hole in it and connect it to the um, copper trace. See? It's not bulged. Uh, ESR is good, but you don't know how long these will last because I've replaced a lot of JH capacitors. I've also placed a lot of caps on. Um, they don't last. Uh, so, on this board, you might be able to see a shine it to the light. You can see through three. Oh, God. Yeah, see through three of the holes. Ideally, well, you, you need to see for all of them. So, I'll take some solder wick. Now, I don't recommend you use this stuff in Dill Extreme because it's fake. It doesn't contain any flux. And it's basically useless to you. You might as well use some copper wire. It doesn't do exactly the same job. Got this on eBay cheap. It's high quality stuff. It's actually made in the USA. Chemwick by Chemtronics. Um... And I will simply just wick up the solder. See if I can get that on camera. See, so soldering iron. Uh, it's probably best to tin it before doing this. Just apply a little solder to the tip. 
and you might notice I've disconnected my air nozzle for now because it gets in the way when doing things like this and I'm not particularly worried I've got a desk fan in here for ventilation so let's just so uh, when clearing a hole I usually apply a bit of solder to the joint well it's not joint actually it's just a pad right now a bit of fresh solder I'm using leaded solder uh, which will probably last longer than lead free then just clear the joint rip the wick this is really good stuff it absorbs so much solder just gonna do it first time just try again and we'll get it eventually sometimes it can help just to dig a little in there with the wick don't be too aggressive though because you could, da could damage the pad there we go, beauty uh. ok so once you've cleared the hole just like I did last time let's see if we find it shine it up to the light and now you can see all four holes are cleared so get out your capacitors Rubicon in this case use the ZLK series ultra make sure to use low ESR I mean it's good and well using Rubicons but if you don't use low ESR caps you may as well not bother um, ZLK or ultra low ESR they're actually I think they're mostly used on motherboards don't know that much about them though so, anyway all you need to do is place them in the holes up Okay. So. Okay. So take your solder, tin your tip first. Nice. Uh, important thing about soldering is never apply solder to the soldering iron and drag it over to the um, joint because then you'll create a cold joint. The flux in the solder will evaporate and uh, joint will tend to be temperature sensitive and you'll get weird symptoms very similar to that of bad capacitors in fact in many cases um, just careful, apply a bit of solder and what you're looking for is the joint to look a little shiny I don't apply too much solder and if it does look a bit dodgy afterwards just go over it again maybe even consider waking up solder and giving it another go if you've got it a little wrong uh, and then you need to chop the leads off now I highly recommend using a proper tool for this but uh, I can't find one at the moment so if you've got some pliers that can cut close enough you can use those You can do all of this with uh, any old soldering iron. The capacitors are not really that sensitive to soldering temperature. Um, just uh, be careful that when you've cut the leads that they won't in any way touch the frame of the TV. And that's two capacitors replaced. I'll do the recapping with the whole board now. I won't film that, it's just repetitive. But, uh, let's see. A bit crooked, it's not perfect, but it's alright, it'll do. Um, I've now completely recapped the power supply. Um, it turned out I misordered my capacitors. This is a 47025, I didn't order that. Uh, but I used a 1025 in its place. It's after an inductor now, in general. Once you get past this little pie filter, it doesn't matter what's on the output. Um, and that one's the 47010. They're all Rubicons on the secondary. Uh, I saw it have a Panasonic 47025, but I forgot to order that. So, also replaced the startup cap. It's a common failure. It's a Nishikon. And there's a Rubicon primary. Now, we get to see if it works. And another monitor, TV, whatever you want to call it, is fixed. Regarding the power LED, uh, it's now green and red. When you turn it off, it goes red. 
uh, it turned out I plugged the wrong connector and strangely it still had some kind of weird function.